Hello again. I'm back with uh, another video tutorial. So back in the summer, I was looking for new ways to improve my film emulation power grade. And I found this one Twitter post by Kelvin Silly where he made uh, actually a new halation power grade. I checked it out and did some messing around with it and I ended up really liking the results. If you've seen any of my latest videos, I've been using this method for pretty much everything. But if you haven't, here's a few examples of it. So if you look at real examples of film, we can see it's just not like a bright red glow or anything like that. It's more of an orangey, reddish, brownish glow. And that's what this does really well at. Just gives it a little bit more pop. It's kind of hard to describe, but when you see it, you'll, you'll kind of know what I mean. I think just to keep things simple, I suggest downloading the power grade from the link below and we can go through them together. I'll also show you how to install them too, so don't worry. So go ahead and make a new power grade album, call it whatever you want, and then right click and then select import and then go to wherever you have the power grade downloaded. And if some of the files aren't showing up, go down here and select all files and you should be able to see them then. Select them all and click import and they'll show up. This is the process for V3. It's essentially the same as V2, just with some new things added to it and some other nodes changed around. Color space transform is still in the same spot. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically changing your camera's color space into a new camera space. If you notice any colors are clipping, go to gamut mapping and then select saturation compression. The OLPF node is now before the grain and this allows everything to be softened up a little and get rid of that digital edge that the footage might have. The OLPF node is just a Gaussian blur and if it seems a little too blurry when you install a power grade, just change it to these settings here. And so we'll sharpen the footage a little bit just to bring some details back. Now, if you don't have film convert, don't worry. Any film grain overlay will work, no problem. This is just my preferred method of selecting the mids, highs, and the lows, but you don't have to do it this way. And now the new halation method. Like I said before, this method adds a little pop to it. If we decompose the note, you can see the process is pretty different than what I originally used. One thing to make sure is you have all your settings matching each other. If the footage looks really blurry and it's not the OLPF node, make sure you have all the markers attached to the new halation node. Deselect them all and then select them all and you should be good to go. The next halation node is the original method but adjust it to have a more orange color to it. The highlights node, the adjustments nodes, and the LUT node are all the same from before. Now, what are these extra power grades doing in here? These power grades are my attempt at doing subtractive coloring. The more saturated the colors are, the darker they are. I know this isn't exact, but it's a good starting point where you'll be able to expand on it and do something more to it. If you look at these examples from music videos and films that are actually shot on film, you can see what I mean. The colors take on a certain richness to it, and I associate that with the film look. A 
Lighting, lenses, and good camera work all matter when making something. But even without lighting, as some of these scenes appear to have, the colors still have that richness to it. If we compare the basic Rec. 709 LUT or even a color space transform on my GH5 footage, you can see the colors don't look the same, especially with the red sweatshirt I'm wearing. Go ahead and make several notes, one for HSL, HSV, and the print film emulation. Here we're just going to use Juan Millar's free print film emulation once they can get on his website. In the HSL node, bypass channel 1 and 3 and do the same for the HSV node. Right click on the HSL node and go down to color space, select HSL, and then lower the gain a little. Go to the HSV node, right click and go to color space again, select HSV, and then raise the gain. Then grade it to your liking by adding the other nodes. I have two power grades here that contain the subtractive color method, one with the film emulation applied to it, and one without it in case you just want a clean grade. So I hope everyone enjoyed that video and took something away from it. Here's a few closing things I'd like to throw in. When you plan on shooting and you want to go for the film look, make sure you shoot it like you would with a real film camera. The cameras are pretty big, so having some weight thrown onto the camera you're using, it'll help a lot and it'll also make a more stable shot too. Also, having a lockdown shot on a tripod will also help. I've been shooting more with the tripod and I actually like the results a lot more because if you're using a light camera like I am, like the GH5 or even like something lighter like the Sony A7S III, you'll have those like little shakes and stuff and you just you just don't want that. It will kind of just not work. <laughs> Another tip I have is to look at things that were shot on film. Look at music videos, movies, commercials, or just whatever you can that actually was shot on film. You'll be able to train your eye a lot more to it and sort of Pick apart what you like and don't like about something and then be able to apply it to your grade. Having a good story, having a well-lit shot, and knowing what your gear is able to do will help you more than any LUT or power grade ever can. What this is here is a tool just be able to have in case you need it. Don't use this as a crutch, but a way to push what you envision into the right direction. I've had people ask me how much these power grades are and I always tell them it's free. I personally feel charging for these power grades would be wrong because I'm not the one who made them. The people who made these are a lot smarter than I am and they deserve all the credit for it. I'm just making a video and sharing what I discovered. With that said, I'd like to thank everyone who's contributed online and has shared their knowledge. I'll put all the examples and the resources and everyone who's helped out down below. Thank you so much for sharing and liking my work. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments and also hit me up on Instagram. Make sure to join our Discord channel too. See ya.